It's taken a little while, but I finally feel confident in presenting our re-solving of shipping in Settlers of Kalgur after the dust changes. The good news is that it makes a lot more sense now, and you can use strategies that give you very consistent returns at different levels of investment. Consistent small returns of things like scarabs, consistent divine orbs at medium levels, and consistent mirror shards at high investment. It took a lot of testing to get it to this confidence level, so a big shout out to my community for so much testing work, and a special shout out to Carmona for doing some insane statistics work. A lot of this hinged on their efforts. Also, thank you to MSI for sponsoring this video. More about them and my new PC later, when you least expect it. So firstly, let's talk about the dust mechanics and what changed. So dust was changed from being multiplicative but kind of weirdly non-functional with a shipment value that didn't really correlate with what you actually got back in return. Now it just straight up adds shipment value at a ratio of 1 to 1 up to the value of your resources sent. Shipment value is now a much better guide for the returns you'll actually get in shipments where there is just one reward type. So for example, all varicium for scarabs or mixed crops which all give currency, the same reward type. The actual rewards are still based on the amount of resource plus dust, but the shipment value actually makes sense now. The only time it won't necessarily correlate is if you send, for example, a little bit of crops with a bunch of bars of resources. If most of the shipment value is made up of the bars, then that's the stuff you will get back. You won't actually get much currency back if only a small portion of that was crops. But when you're looking at single reward types, it actually makes a lot of sense now. Now my previous guide for what rewards are given for which resources at which ports is still up to date. The only thing that's really changed is dust and shipment value and our actual strategies because of these changes. But I'll include the cheat sheet in the description below as well for you. So for dust mechanics, dust gets diminishing returns when you equal total shipment value of goods. So for example, 120,000 value of wheat, anything after 120,000 value of dust gets diminished value, pretty heavily so. So for example, if you wanted to double the value of a single piece of wheat, one wheat has 12 value, so you'd send 12 dust and that would equal 2 wheat, or 24 value. So the takeaway from this is that you can boost your shipment value as much as you want up to the pre-dust shipment value. So if you send a million total value of mixed crops, you can send 1 million dust. And this becomes quite hard to produce unless you're consistently dusting and shredding high rarity uniques, for example. But nonetheless, it is still a very useful tool for boosting value. And that's because dust effectively pretends to be all of your other resources. It's likely divided up based on the ratios of how much of each you sent. Simply put, this means that you can use dust to send more resources beyond what you can actually produce. You can only produce, even with maxed out workers, so many crops in a day. So by using dust, you can get those shipments out at larger values faster. And dust is a bit less time limited since you can kind of invest in putting high rarity uniques and high tier rares into the duster. Just note that dust won't affect port quotas, only the actual resources will get that bonus. So before we get into the strategic recommendations, I want to explain the testing we did for shipping strategy. Kamona is a member of my community who's an aspiring statistician studying in that field, and they did a whole bunch of different tests, including something like 30 shipments of mixed crops, up to 700,000 combined value, just to measure the chance of divine at different values. This already accounts for the tier 1 currency variance, for example, getting an exalt instead of a divine. So this is just talking about specifically getting a divine. The shipment value to consistently get a tier 1 currency, for example, an exalt, divine, or a null, is probably quite a bit less. Each time you get one of those, there's a only a percentage chance that it will be a divine instead of an exalt or a null. From previous testing, we know that exalts and divines are about equal weighting. So every time you get an exalt, that could have been a divine. We did indeed find out also that mixed crops with dust is just the same as mixed crops without dust. There's been plenty of tests done on that, as long as the shipment value is the same between the two tests. 5 million of crops is going to give you about the same results as 2.5 million of crops with 2.5 million of dust. So if you'll direct your eyes to this fantastic graph they did, you can see a very important looking shape here on this curve. Now this is the presence of a divine in the shipment return. And this is the shipment value sent. And the important benchmark to have a look at here is that 700,000 value in mixed crops over here is 50% chance to get a divine. So if you send 700,000 value of crops consistently, 
whether it's crops or mixed crops with dust, as long as it's 700k, you'll get a divine roughly half the time. Now we'll talk about extrapolating further outwards from this data in a moment, but the important thing to note is the shape of this curve and what this means for your return on investment of your crops. Now consider this, 350,000 combined value of crops sent in a shipment would only have something like a 12.5% chance of getting a divine back on average. So if you consistently sent out shipments of 350k, you'd be constantly rolling the dice against 12.5%. Now if you combined two 350,000 shipments together, you would get much closer to 50%, potentially even a little over. As such, you're getting way more percentage chance of a divine for sending 700k than you are for sending separate 350,000 shipments. That's basically what this curve here describes. As such, strategically, it is, and conflicting with previously kind of held best practices, better to send larger shipments less often than it is to send a lot of smaller shipments. Now, there are exceptions and other strategic considerations that we'll talk about in a moment, but that's the big takeaway from this. If you take only one thing away, it's that you should probably be aiming for 700k plus 1 million-ish shipments rather than sending like a bunch of 200k shipments because you're going to be getting a lot less divines from those. There's still a chance you'll get a divine, you'll get lucky every so often, and that's why that strategy kind of works, quote unquote, but you're getting less than you could be by sending fewer larger shipments. So let's talk a little bit about extrapolating what happens beyond this point. Because testing large quantities of tests between like 1 to 50 million is obviously very difficult. But this does, got, this does give us, along with some other things we know, some pretty important tools to work with in determining kind of what happens. So this trend would likely continue up to the point where you get a divine close to 100% of the time. But as you can see, it becomes kind of a bit more linear as we go. As such, there is a big jump in value from sending, say, like a bunch of 100k shipments to sending a bunch of 700k shipments, but then it kind of levels off a bit more where you're not necessarily getting a ton more back for that point. But if you wanted consistent returns, then you might want to send something like 1, 2, 3 million value shipments. But that said, there will be a point where divines start to, because of this quality roll-up system that we know exists, they would start to convert into sacred orbs, which are worth substantially less than divines. They're worth like 30 chaos each, but they're rarer. And so those are what divines kind of get upgraded into, it seems. We've seen some evidence of this from people sending kind of mid uh, 20 million-ish shipments, or even some of the 50 million shipments you see a bit of this as well, where people aren't necessarily getting a ton of divines from them because they're getting rolled up into sacreds and then into mirror shards. So this kind of sacred orb roll-up may result in and this is pretty hard to prove, a value of low value somewhere in the middle. So maybe somewhere in that 10 to 30, 40 million range is going to be this point where you're not really getting more divines for your crops, you're getting more sacred orbs, which are worth less. In that case, you might be better off sending more, say, several million value shipments than you would be from sending just one 20 million shipment. Imagine something like four shipments of five million might end up giving more divines but less sacreds than a single shipment of 20 million which might upgrade some of those divines into sacreds and be less kind of divine return on your crop investment. Now but, and this is a big point, there is a second very well documented shipment value range where sacred orbs start converting into mirror shards. We have at this point countless 50 million value shipment tests that have been sent and posted on Reddit and in our community and things like that. And these give an approximate average two and a half mirror shards with something like a range between zero and six, but zero seems to be quite uncommon, as does six. So pretty consistently people are getting two, three mirror shards. So I, I consider it an average of two and a half mirror shards. So this means that it's likely best to send fewer larger shipments of somewhere between 700,000 value and a couple million, and then 50 million shipments, as big as you can get to roll as many of those sacreds up into mirror shards, which is substantially more valuable. But do you want to know the biggest surprise? The best shipment I ever got was from the port of MSI, my sponsor. That's right, this is the sponsored segment right now. What a segue. We'll get back to the guide in a moment, but in the meantime, look at this sweet unboxing video. I had a lot of fun with it. Maybe a little too much fun. MSI make gaming PCs and they sponsor creators like me. They sent me this sweet new rig, the MSI MPG Infinite X2 Gaming Desktop. I'm pretty stoked on it so far, and I'm glad I got a nice upgrade with Path of Exile 2's beta just around the corner. 
It's running well and it's nice and quiet, despite the beefy 14700K processor and the RTX 4070 Ti Super graphics card. For a PC like this, you can't just do any old unboxing and then plug it in, no. It's got a user-friendly design that simplifies upgrades and maintenance, so you've really got to take some time first and get to know it before you plug it in. And with its huge expansion capacity of 4 M2 SSD slots, you really should wine and dine it first. Maybe a romantic little picnic. And thanks to the silent storm cooling too, that optimizes the airflow with a dual chamber design, ensuring whisper quiet acoustics. You can really enjoy some private time together. If this sounds like something you'd be into as much as I am, then consider dating, I mean, ordering yourself an MSI gaming desktop today with the link in the description. Because this one is all mine. So TLDR, what should you do? First, let's talk about the budget normie strat, what most people will probably want to do. At the lower end, so before you've kind of like fully upgraded your town and your workers, just send as much crops and dust as you can consistently send without high risk. As seen in that graph from before, the more you can send in one go, the better return you'll get. So consider how much you produce versus how often you'll send ships over a day. Send as much dust as you can up to matching the shipment value one to one. So for optimizing, you really want to send fewer, larger shipments, aiming for that 700,000 value plus range, which is where we've proven at least that there is a significant jump in value. Smaller shipments seem to be less efficient for getting a divine. So the 700k threshold looks a little something like this, 7.7k across the board, or a little less if you want to send a little bit of dust with it. Probably often going to do something like 7,000 across the board, assuming your crop production is pretty even across which is a decent way to do things based on the fact that you get the same kind of value returns based on whichever crop you grow. So you just want to grow an even mixture of them. And then you can top this up with 70K. And this is kind of the simplest strategy I came up with for reaching 700 value. 7K across the board with 70K equals 700,000, 50% chance of a divine. Nice and simple and easy to remember. And this is very doable, including the dust production for an average player who just plays a couple hours a day, maybe. 70,000 dust in particular is not a lot. And this amount of crops is very easy to produce many times this in day, per day, even when it's not optimized. In order to do this with zero risk, you need just under rank sevens across the board. As you can see, I've got all rank sevens and then one rank six, and that brings that risk down to zero. This is roughly around where you can kind of do this the most gold efficiently. But the juicer strategy is of course, really sending those full capped out shipments, and that is 50 million value of mixed crops and dust. You'll want at least 25 million crops mixed value to avoid the dust diminishing value, because anything under that, then you have to start sending exponentially larger amounts of dust. But most of the time, probably you're going to do something like a larger amount of crops, like 30, 40 million crops, and then just finishing it off with dust up to that 50 million value threshold. This will get you an average of two and a half mirror shards per shipment, along with a little stack of divines and either some nice tattoos or runes, depending where you send it. When you start doing shipment values of this size, really all the value percentage proportional wise is coming from those mirror shards. Now there is a sub strategy that anyone should employ kind of while they're waiting to build up crops and dust for these bigger shipments, whether it's 700k plus or going for a big 50 million shipment. And that is Varicium to Ribon Fell. There are some variations of this strategy, but the simple thing is basically five bars. You can, I think you can technically send a little bit less. I'll just do five, which like one map will allow you to do this for days on end without running out. And then as few lower rank workers as possible, you want to use low ranks because occasionally they'll just die doing this strategy <laughs> because of the frequency of it. So you don't really want to use, lose like your 10 rank and you don't really need that much and you want the gold cost to be nice and low. So you can just use like a rank four or a lower shipper for this. And then you just send this to Ribe and Fell. That costs basically no gold, 40 gold. And you will get several scarabs back on average. Sometimes they're worth just one C, but sometimes they're worth 10, 20 C as well. So you'll get something ranging from five to 40 chaos back per shipment like this. And you can send these out constantly while you build up crops and dust for the bigger shipments. The reason this seems to work is that there's basically like a minimum threshold for the reward, which as soon as you cross that, which just seems to be a couple of Varicium bars, 
you will hit that minimum threshold and get the reward. It's basically like an on-off. You get no reward if you don't send enough for a shipment, and you will get some reward, and that some reward threshold is quite good. The only thing I potentially see them changing if they make another patch to the shipping is this, and making this less valued, so you have to send more Varisium bars, but for now this works. Now a note on port quotas, these do work and affect the value of your returns, so do use them where you can. But we have found that long term most people are kind of getting blocked where they can't really do port quota system all that much anymore, so it doesn't really need to be emphasised or worried about too much. And that's just because you get bottlenecked on things like Crimson Iron, right? Like you start needing ridiculous amounts of Crimson Iron in order to fulfil these quotas, and that can just take so many maps to produce all of that. If I want them to change anything else, it's uh, I want a way to re-roll these, maybe like by spending gold or something, or I want them to adjust down the requirement favoured resources for bars in particular. The food ones are easy to meet, but these bars are a bit of a problem. So don't worry about it too much. And it's also unclear how it affects things at 50 million value capped shipments. I suspect it probably still does work, but at that point, the boost that you're getting from the favoured resources is so small compared to how much resources you've sent anyway, it's really hard to statistically see any difference. So take advantage of port quotas if you can, but it's not a big deal. Some other miscellaneous info, what about Kalgur? Uh, through a fair bit of testing, Carmona seems to have given some pretty good evidence that Kalgur seems to make no difference for currency returns. I've also checked plenty of 50 million value shipments uh, from different places, Ribenfell versus Kalgur, and there really doesn't seem to be any difference. So if there is a difference, it's pretty minor and statistically hard to analyze. And I do kind of hate that it works this way, because I feel like there should be some benefit for taking on the increased risk and the increased duration and the increased gold cost of going to Kalgur. So it seems like for the crop shipments at least, you mostly just want to send things to Ribenfell or Nakanu. The only thing that seems to matter for the more distant ports is that they do tend to give some better rewards back for certain resources, like the bars and things. And what about runes and tattoos and things like that? For runes in particular, Carmona tested runes with shipment value, and as you can see from the dot graph here, uh, it's quite linear. This just means it doesn't really matter what you do here in terms of strategy. If you send a bunch of small shipments, you're going to get the same overall returns as sending one big shipment. There's no obvious curve here to take advantage of. Tattoos are likely going to be the same. So you'll obviously see more power runes for big shipments, but that's just because you're getting more runes back in total. So don't make any strategic decisions based on runes or tattoos beyond the fact that you're sending to a port for either runes or tattoos. So I hope that helps you folks with the rest of your Settlers League. I'm still having a blast with it myself and I don't really plan on stopping. It's kind of the best league ever to just sink into for long-term play. So expect some more content as I go. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.